This is the worst prime lens for the RF mount. And if you have an RF mount camera, you should 100% buy this lens. So typically when you talk about a lens being the worst in a mount system, that's a bad thing. But at the time of recording this video, all of the prime lenses on the RF mount cost thousands of dollars and are super high quality. Whereas this is much more of a budget lens. And if you wanna talk about value for the money that you're paying, the image quality that you get at this price point, honestly, it probably packs much more bang for your buck. So I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of this list, strengths and weaknesses, and get into who it might be right for. So as far as the build and the build quality of this lens goes, currently it is the smallest RF mount lens and it's made of this like hard plastic. It seems durable, but I mean, I can't say long-term, but it also keeps it light and it does have a metal lens mount, which is going to really help with the durability of this lens. It is not weather sealed though, but for me, I don't know. I don't take my lenses and stuff out in bad weather. Like if you're gonna shoot in the rain, use an umbrella or something. So it doesn't really bother me, especially at this price point. If you're paying more, then you would definitely expect some weather sealing. This lens has a focus ring and it is an electronic focus by wire system. But one thing that I think is really cool about the focus by wire lenses on the RF mount is that your focusing distance actually can show up in your EVF which I think is way more useful than having it on the lens because you don't have to look away from your viewfinder to see where you're focusing at if you are manually focusing. It also has the control ring at the end of the lens, which I have actually really enjoyed so far. Personally, I have it set to ISO right now, but there's a lot of different options that you can set it to. You have two switches on this lens, one for choosing between autofocus and manual focus, and one for turning the image stabilization on and off. Basically, in a nutshell, this is a really compact lens that when you put it on a mirrorless body is going to give you a really compact setup. Photography with this lens, so I mean 35 millimeters is just a really classic, really versatile focal length. You can get a lot of your environment into the photos without having too much distortion from being like an ultra wide angle lens or something. And also, this lens has macro capabilities and it's the first like macro lens that I've ever really had and I've had a lot of fun playing around with it. The cool thing about macro on this lens is first of all, it's 35 millimeters and wide. So it's gonna give you a different kind of feel to your macro shots than most macro lenses that are gonna be a little more telephoto. It also has image stabilization built into it. So you can even get some really cool macro shots handheld, which is just really fun. So it kind of works for macro if you're just playing around, but can also be used for macro if you really wanna get some cool, high quality macro shots. Another thing with the macro capabilities is that you just have to worry a lot less in regular compositions about getting just a little bit too close to your subject. Sometimes with lenses, a lot of telephoto lenses especially, when you get just right where you want to, it's just barely too close to the subject. And because this has macro capabilities, you don't really have to worry about that. If you're getting too close to focus with this subject, you're probably too close to the subject anyway. Now I will say that I've always found image stabilization and the idea that you can slow down the shutter speed less useful for photographers because unless you're photographing something that's still and not moving at all, some kind of non-living object, then slowing the shutter speed down that much isn't usually that helpful because if it's a person or an animal or anything that moves at all, you're gonna get blur. Now, sometimes you might want that and that's a creative option that you do have with this lens. But the idea that you have to have image stabilization in a photography lens, I've never bought into that but the option is there. Also, the autofocus performance using this lens for photography is great, especially if you're pairing it with the eye tracking for shooting people, it's awesome, and you really don't have to worry about whether you're gonna miss focus or not. For this price, the image quality for photography, I think it is a great lens, and certainly something that will be great to have, even if it's not gonna be your main focal length, it's small enough, you can just throw it in your bag, or if you just wanna walk around with a light camera setup, have it on your camera, 35, again, very versatile focal length, I think it's a great buy for the price. So for video, 
35 millimeters is a really great focal length and honestly probably my favorite focal length for shooting video with. It's wide enough that you can get really good handheld shots and bring in enough environment around your subject, but not so wide that it starts to get distorted. In video, the image quality is great here too. Really no complaints, especially at this price point. And the fact that you have image stabilization, which is awesome for shooting handheld video, on top of a 35 millimeter lens, which is good for shooting handheld video, and then the macro capabilities, you can get some really interesting shots with this lens. Now I shoot mainly with the EOS R, which does not have in-body image stabilization, but again, the IS in this lens is really good, so typically I don't need it. But of course, the EOS R and the RP have digital image stabilization, and there are two options for that. So with the first just enabled option, I think this footage actually turns out really good and very usable with the enhanced, I don't know, I typically don't like the enhanced personally because it just crops in so much. And especially if you're filming in 4K, we know that the R and the RP have a huge crop in 4K already. I don't find it necessary, but honestly, I've been able to shoot a lot of handheld shots with just the lens stabilization on this and be perfectly happy with how stable they come out without doing any digital stabilization or any stabilization in post. So this will more than likely become my main lens for video work because of the focal length and the image stabilization. 35 millimeters I think is great for social media stuff, which is a lot of what I do personally. If you're gonna pick one prime lens for shooting video, I would say this is it. So typically 35 millimeters is not at all what you think of for a focal length for vlogging. I would not necessarily recommend this as just a vlogging lens, but I know people have had the question, can you vlog with this lens? So I wanted to do a really quick test and show you guys what it's gonna look like, what kind of field of view and how well that might work as a vlogging lens if you're in that situation. I mean, it's definitely doable, but it is pretty tight. So, uh, I mean, here's what it looks like. You gotta be the judge of whether it's wide enough for you to vlog on. But this is what it would look like if you did have the aperture wide open. So who is it for? Well, this is a great compact lens. It's really good as a walk around prime lens if you're trying to keep your setup small and compact and light. The focal length, again, great for a lot of stuff, street photography, travel photography, social media work, filming. It's also a budget macro lens. So if you are on a budget and looking for a lens that's gonna tick off a lot of boxes, a medium wide angle, maybe something for video work, and also something for macro shots, this is a really, really compelling lens. If you're looking for full frame mirrorless quality on a budget, I think this RF 35 millimeter lens paired with the RP and maybe even the EF 50 millimeter 1.8 under $1,500, that gets you a really nice and pretty versatile kit with some fast prime lenses. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are interested in purchasing this lens or any of the other gear that I mentioned in this video, I will have affiliate links in the description down below. If you use those with no extra cost to you, you help support this channel a little bit so that I can keep making videos for you guys. Again, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about this lens? What lens are you using? Are you thinking about maybe getting this lens? If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. See you guys.